Hello and welcome to this destructive material testing lab. Um, what we're actually going to be doing today is an ultimate tensile strength test on a, tam on a sample of 7030 brass. Um, now what you'll notice here is we've got the, uh, the ultimate tensile test machine and we've also got that connected um, via a PC. Um, so briefly I'll just tell you about the ultimate tensile test machine and then I'll tell you about the program that we're, uh, that we're actually running um, and then we'll begin the test. So what we have here is the, is the, uh, the tensile test machine. Uh, inside the two jaws of the chuck here we have our sample of 7030 brass. Um, what you'll also see on this machine is a load cell. Now basically what's going to happen when we run the test or when we begin the, uh, when we begin the program is first of all the, all of the slack is going to be taken out of the chuck so the test piece itself will be put under tension. Once it's under tension the force is going to increase so that the two chucks are going to move apart and the force that's being placed on the test piece is going to increase, hence increasing the stress. As this happens, the machine's actually going to do two things. First of all, it's going to record the force, and the force is going to be recorded via this load cell here. And it's also going to measure the displacement, or it's going to measure how much the test piece is being elongated or stretched by. So we've got two important things there, the force and the elongation, or the stretch of the test piece. Now over here we have the, uh, the PC program, and what the PC program does is basically the function I've just described there. It's set up to take the tension out, uh, to take the slack out, and then begin the test, and then once the test begins, it will be constantly recording data, both from the load cell and the displacement. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to run the test, and as soon as the test begins, I'm going to zoom in on the sample so that you can actually see what happens to the sample uh, in close-up as, uh, as it moves closer to failure. And also what I'm going to be doing is capturing this, uh, the graph on the computer here. Now this is actually a, um, a live, real-time graph of what's happening over here. So as you can imagine, we'll see the, the force increase, and as the force increases, the displacement or the stretch of the test piece is going to increase. So first of all, you'll have an opportunity to see what's happening to the test piece, and then once you've seen that, we'll review the graph and what's happening with the graph, and hopefully it'll explain a few things about what's happening with the, the test piece as it, approaches its, uh, as it approaches failure, and then eventually fails. Okay, so we're going to begin the test now. Okay, so you'll notice that the test piece is elongating, you can actually physically see it elongating and we know that it's getting closer and closer to the point where it's eventually going to fail. Chucks are moving at a very slow speed but sufficient to place that test piece under a load. Just keep a close eye on the centre of the sample. You can see it narrowing see the cross section reducing it's getting closer and closer to failure there it goes necking in at the center okay perfect
Okay, so you'll notice that the test piece is elongating. You can actually physically see it elongating. And we know that it's getting closer and closer to the point where it's eventually going to fail. Chucks are moving at a very slow speed, but sufficient to place that test piece under a load. Just keep a close eye on the centre of the sample. You can see it narrowing. See the cross section reducing. It's getting closer and closer to failure. There it goes. Necking in at the centre. Okay, perfect.